everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Today we're going to be addressing one of the biggest requests I get on a regular basis as to what video I should make. We're going to take a look at the top 10 fighters within the Wheel of Time story. Now before we get into the video, I want to mention again my partnership with Audible.com. If you have not taken advantage of the free audiobook offer, you really should. All you have to do is sign up for a one month free trial for the Audible service and you can even cancel the subscription without ever paying a dime or you can decide to keep it and take advantage of the thousands of audiobooks available on the platform. And you are greatly supporting the channel by signing up. So again, go to www.audible.com forward slash Nablus to get signed up if you haven't already. So let's go ahead and get into the video. We're going to start by throwing up a spoiler warning. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red, meaning it will have major spoilers. In some of my spoiler videos, the spoilers don't go to the final book, but this is not one of those. There will be spoilers all the way up through the final book in the series. If you do not want to have anything spoiled, click away now and watch the videos when you have finished the series. So let's get into the top 10 fighters in the Wheel of Time. Before I get into my list, let me give you the rules I use to judge who made the list and what order they went in. First, no special abilities can be used. For example, channeling the one power, entering the world of dreams, using Tarangriol, these things are not going to be allowed in our fights. Things like luck and Tavira nature will be allowed as those things are a part of their fighting technique, as well as the warder bond will also be counted. The second rule is that I am judging their competency in one-on-one -on -one battles, not necessarily in warfare. These are my thoughts as to who would win in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Along with that, only melee weapons will be allowed, no bows or throwing knives. Also, each character will have their best weapon to fight with, and they will be at their peak physical condition from the books. For instance, if they are injured at some point, this fight will occur pre-injury. They are literally at their maximum power physically for these fights. And my last rule is that we must see the character fight in the books. There are plenty of characters in the books who have their martial prowess referred to casually or in memory, but that's not going to count for this list. We must see them physically fight within the series. That does not mean we will discount what is said about the characters and their abilities, but only the people that we have seen fight will be rated in this video. So let's go ahead and get into the list. Coming in at number 10, we have Torum Riotin. Torum Riotin is a Kyrianan lord and high seat of House Riotin. He is related to the former king of Kyrian, Galdrian. His weapon was the sword, and he was judged as a blade master, having been judged in his technique by five other blade masters unanimously. He later shows us his prowess in the sword as he battles Rand at the height of his power to a draw, even manages to strike a blow with a practice sword against Rand, hurting Rand after hitting him in the side. Albeit Rand was slightly distracted at that point due to the fog that came with Padan Fane and Mashadar. Torum Riotin met his end to one of our other characters from our list. In Winter's Heart, he attempts to ambush Rand and Farmatting and is quickly dispatched by Lan Mandragoran. His easy defeat by Lan is why he doesn't make it higher on this list, but he does get the number 10 spot. Coming in at number 9 on our list, Gaul of the Imran Sept of the Sharad Aiel. Gaul is the leader of the Stone Dogs, a fighting organization among the Aiel peoples. Most of the Aiel are considered to be extremely formidable fighters, easily counting for as many as two or three other Wetlander troops, but Gaul is considered a very skilled fighter among the Aiel. Gaul's primary weapon is the spear, but he is also very skilled in unarmed combat, as most of the Aiel are. His greatest feats of strength in the series include defeating eight armed white cloaks while he himself was unarmed. He participates in multiple battles, proving his worth, and in the final book he accompanies Perrin into the Wolf Dream, and he ends up fighting a number of other Aiel warriors on his own and defeats three of them with his bare hands. Due to his physical nature and the fact that he is very skilled in both armed and unarmed combat, Gaul earns the number nine spot on my list. With the number 8 spot on the list, maybe a somewhat controversial choice for some, but here is where I put Perrin Ebaro. The reason that this could be seen as somewhat controversial is that many believe Perrin would rank higher. Let me explain why he deserves a spot on the list first of all, and then I'll explain why I have him here. Perrin's primary weapon is the battle axe and then later the hammer. We're going to go with his power wrought hammer at the height of his power, as that really is his primary weapon at that point. Perrin is fairly skilled with both the hammer and the axe after training with Land Mandragoran, and just experience in using them in battle over time. In addition to his skill with the weapon, Perrin is physically one of the strongest, if not the strongest, human character we see in the story. 
This makes it as though almost every one of his blows would be a killing blow. He also has very animalistic instincts and senses that make him a very dangerous opponent. He also fights with a berserker rage that can make him very dangerous. Add on top of that his severe in nature, he is quite a formidable opponent. So why is he so low on our list? Well, because of Perrin's berserker rage style, he can leave himself open to attack. He doesn't wear armor, and the few times that we have seen him fight one-on-one, -on -one, he hasn't fared all that well. Aram basically kicks his butt while wielding a sword. There are far more skilled sword fighters than Aram on the list. I think it is due to his lack of training and his choice of weapon, but Perrin does get the number 8 spot on my list. Coming in at number 7, we have Aemon Valda. Aemon Valda was a white cloak and eventually, through some scheming, achieved the rank of Lord Captain Commander of the Children of the Light. After arranging for the assassination of Pedra Nial, he raped Morghese Tracand and made alliances with the Shan Chan. He's clearly not a good guy, but he is quite a skilled swordsman and fighter. Valda's primary weapon was the sword, and he achieved Blade Master status after being voted unanimously by five other Blade Masters. We mainly see him fight while challenged by Galad Demadred in a trial under the light. He manages to severely wound Galad, and although ultimately defeated, Galad believes he was lucky and that Valda was actually more skilled than he. Because of Galad thinking this, and the fact that he had a reputation of being incredibly deadly, Aemon Valda earns the number 7 spot on my list. Coming in at number 6, everyone's least favorite character in the series, Gawain Tracand. Gawain Tracand is the brother to the Queen of Andor and the warder to the Amarlin Sea. His primary weapon is the sword, and he is quite skilled at its use. One of the first feats of strength we see is him defeating Hamar, the head warder, during the deposing of Swan Sanche. Hamar was accounted a blade master, and by defeating him in single combat, Gawain earns that title as well. He defeats another warder's sleet often when they spar, and he is considered to be one of the best fighters among the warders. Gawain later defends Egwene against three blood knives that he could barely even see, and these are considered to be the elite soldiers of the Shanshan Empire. Gawain, while quite annoying, is a very skilled fighter and earns the number six spot on the list. Breaking into our top five, we have Gawain's stepbrother, Galad Damadred. Galad is the half-brother of the Queen of Andor, and eventually, after defeating Amon Valda, he becomes the Lord Captain Commander of the Children of the Light. Galad's primary weapon is again the sword, and he is considered to be one of the best alive at using it. Gawain thinks that Galad is as good as someone can be with the sword, and Galad defeated another Blade Master, earning that title for himself. He also manages to hurt Demon Dread, who is considered to be one of the greatest swordsmen of all time. These feats, and the way he is talked about by others, are what earn him the number 5 spot on the list. Coming in at number 4, we have Barid Belmadar, also known as the Forsaken Demon Dread. Demon Dread, despite being an incredibly powerful user of the One Power, was also incredibly skilled with the sword having practiced with it for hundreds of years. He demonstrates himself incredibly skilled. We see him in his first duel against Gawain, who at the time was using three blood knife rings. He sees the assassination attempt coming, and is really easily able to defeat Gawain, who is a great swordsman in his own right. Later, Galad fights him, wearing a foxhead medallion copy. Galad manages to wound him, but later Demon Dread is able to defeat Galad and cuts off his sword arm. Galad is later defeated by Lan Mandragoran, but only after Demon Dread plunges his sword into Lan in what would have been a killing wound. Demon Dread defeats two Blade Masters and almost defeats a third. These feats alone, along with his reputation, give him the number four spot on the list. Coming in at the number three spot on the list, we have the second of our Taviran boys, Matrim Cawthon. These last three spots were really difficult to pick, and they really could be interchangeable, honestly. Matt is from the Two Rivers, and is therefore highly skilled in both the bow and the quarterstaff. Matt also has the blood of Manetherin running through him, probably more so than our other characters. And because of this, he seems to remember various fighting techniques. Later, when given memories from past lives, he has even more battle acumen. Add to this his extreme luck due to his Taviran nature, and he is extremely difficult to best. Matt's primary weapon will be the Ashendari, 
a spear type weapon with a butt end uh, and basically a sword point at the other end. Matt's skill with the quarterstaff makes him a perfect candidate to use the Ashendari. Matt's first feat of strength is when he defeats both Galad and Gawain together with just a quarterstaff, right after being healed of his connection to the Shadar Logoth dagger. Given that these are two characters from our list already, this is quite a feat to beat both of them at the same time. He later successfully fights off the Golom, an inhuman creature that is extremely fast and almost impossible to kill. Matt's luck frequently comes into play, and that coupled with his extreme skill make him very deadly. Matt gets the number three spot on the list. Coming in at number two, we have the Dragon Reborn himself, Randall Thor. Although Rand is primarily known for his channeling abilities, he was an extremely skilled fighter and swordsman in his own right. He has been trained by Lan Mandragoran extensively, trained with the Aiel in unarmed combat, and has many memories and inherited skills from Luz Theron, his previous life. In regards to his feats of strength, he defeats the High Lord Turok, a blade master from the Shan Chan, before he had really even learned the sword. Rand later trains against six swordsmen, the best he could find, and offers to pay them if they could defeat him, and none could. He struggles a bit against another blade master in Torum Raiten, but that is really only because he was distracted by Mashadar. Even without his sword, Rand is extremely deadly. In Lord of Chaos, he disarms two warders and then kills them while being unarmed himself. In Winter's Heart, he kills Rochade and with his bare hands using unarmed fighting techniques. Rand is an extremely talented fighter and has an iron will an experience from his past lives that make him very, very deadly. He is also the most Taviran person alive. He earns the number two spot on the list. And lastly, coming in at number one, probably not a surprise to anyone, Lan Mandragoran. Lan was considered by Robert Jordan to be the best fighter in the series. Lan was a warder and trained from birth to avenge his homeland of Malkir. Land is very skilled with many different weapons, but his main weapon is the sword. He proves his skill with the sword time and again. He kills Murdral, defeats a blade master in Torum Raiten with extreme ease. He is considered the best of the warders and a legend around the world. His greatest feat of strength, though, is killing Demon Dread after fighting all day and being extremely tired. He allows Demon Dread to stab him, but in doing so, keeps Demon Dread from blocking his attack as he stabs the Forsaken in the throat. Lan is the best fighter in the series and earns the number one spot on the list. So what did you all think of my list? Did I get it right? Let me know in the comments below who your top 10 would be if you don't agree with mine. Also, if you liked the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel to see more of my Wheel of Time videos as they come out. You can click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when new stuff gets released and when I'm gonna be doing live stream videos. Don't forget about the audible.com offer for a free book if you don't already have an Audible subscription. But if you do have one and you wanna support the channel, please consider taking a look at my Patreon. You can see Patreon-only content and can support the channel to whatever level you would like that you feel like you should. Thank you so much to my current patrons. I really could not do this without you. Hey guys, hope you all enjoyed the video and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?